add title to help out there. That's right. Y'all hold on. I've got to get it over here on my phone. Here I am. Y'all hold on. I've got to get it over here on my phone. Here I am. Okay, share. No. Okay. So. Y'all hold on. I've got to get it over here on my phone. Ron, hi, honey. Okay, sure. And Cindy, I'm sure will be right behind you. And Dawn, okay. watching with you. I got to get the sound off, which I had off. And I think when I cut it on it. Okay. Let's see. Dawn and Ron, so far, that's what I, and over here, yes, that's, that's what I have on my, and Deborah Pickering, hi, honey. Oh my goodness, I see my hair sticking out. I'm sorry. I've been all over the place today. Just, I don't, what time is it? I, it's 827. We've got three minutes. It's so good. I'm so glad y'all are on here with me. This is good. This is going to be a good night. It's going to be, the Lord's, the Lord is so good. And I'm excited. I get excited about our meetings, even though sometimes I'm a little bit, think maybe, I'm not as prepared as I should be, but then it's all the work of the Holy Spirit. He's the one's doing this anyway, so I have to give it back to him. I don't think you, you know, you don't know that you're, I know I'm sharing what I'm supposed to share. And what my thing is, do it and get it out from my heart, the heart of Jesus to you. Marianne, hi, honey. We've got people coming in from different states, so I'm so thankful. And uh, it, it's, we've had our air conditioning on because it was 80 81 yesterday and it's been hot today even though it was cloudy so so deborah i pray you've had a good weekend honey uh radella and rommel uh and wilson and cindy i'm so glad you were all watching starla from norman oklahoma i'm so glad you're on it's not quite we've got two minutes it makes me happy to see people people that i love just it makes me so happy and cindy and wilson pastor there are cindy and wilson wilson and cindy are baptist pastors and they're telling everybody hi and will from colorado hi will and i've already been praying for your precious daughter dorothy dave shannon and cindy slagle are watching and chase hi chase i thought about you today chase i know the lord's t touching people tonight He's touching people, and people are going to be delivered and healed it tonight. Cindy Slager, hi, honey. I love you too, Cindy. And Abby and your precious son, I pray everything went well with him this week. We certainly were praying for him. So happy to Starla, I'm glad you're here with us too. Starla was a friend of my oldest daughter's all through high school in Norman, Oklahoma. And I, I don't know, um, well, they've been friends forever. Grew up together and... It's so good to see that you love the Lord, Starla. That, and, and yes, I just, I love to see these children. There was a neighbor of ours, little girl, this Jewish family, that, that family was having problems and she came over and she was born again with me holding her. And she comes, she's on Facebook and, uh, and she has gone on with the Lord and very active in the Christian walk. It's just Zoe, hi, Pastor Zoe, Dr. Zoe, hi, Nanny. I miss talking, speaking with you. I started to call you yesterday, and I didn't get a chance. I've been backlogged with prayer requests, and it's been qu quite something. But the things that the Lord's doing is uh, is just amazing. It's 8.30, so we, we're going to welcome the Holy Spirit. So right now, before we go any further, repent of anything you can think of that would stop you from receiving anything from the Lord tonight. You have to understand this is the work of the Holy Spirit. Regardless of what I'm doing, the Holy Spirit's working. Everyone coming on, the Holy Spirit is working, or you wouldn't be on here. And 
uh, you wouldn't take time to be on here just to be here with me. So it's the work of the Holy Spirit. So repent. I've already done that for myself and my family, back to Adam and Eve. That nothing, no generational iniquity that was not repented of can hold us in bondage any in any area in Jesus' name. And I'm praying the same thing for you. And so we welcome the Holy Spirit. Anyone coming on, we ask the Lord to cleanse them right now and that the Holy Spirit fills the room where they're sitting. That the Holy Spirit's anointing is coming down, Lord, on everybody that's coming on. The anointing of the power of the Holy, Holy Spirit in Jesus' name is anointing people now to be healed, delivered, set free, and they hear truth that will go with them that they won't forget truth. It's the word that changes your life. It's the word that sustains you. It's the word that takes you into the Holy of Holies. It's the word working in our lives to make us into what Jesus wants us to be, his disciples. So I'm going to start out with this. And I do have quite a few healings. And while I was sitting here trying to get my, everything cut off, the Lord said, a dislocated shoulder. So someone's being healed of a dis. I mean, he just spoke it all to me. I was concerned about getting uh, the title. I did not get the title quite right on this tonight. And you'll understand. I don't even know what to put on there because I, I didn't think to figure it out before I came on. And now they didn't ask for that until last week, I think, was the first time. A title and then a word about it so I, if I could say something it's Jesus is taking us into the holy of holies into where he dwells that's the title that's my heart for all of us for me all of my family and for you all my I call you my children and your children's children that Jesus takes us into where he dwells where he dwells and the surprise to pray to stay there so I just thank you, the Lord. So I'm welcoming you tonight. And we've asked the Holy Spirit to fill every land, fall on everybody coming on here, that they go away from here tonight and thankful that they came on and they heard the truth. There's someone on his way, Eric, somebody, but I don't know. I don't know who. Thank you, Lord, for sending Eric. I am the way. Jesus said, I am the way. I am truth. I am life. And where I want to go tonight is the life. Uh, with the way, the truth, life. So many Christians are, are missing out on the life he has for us. But there's a process. Joyce, hi, honey. And paid, hi, honey. I'm so, Joyce, I'm so glad and paid that you're on here. And Mansu, hi, Siash. Uh, I'm so glad you're back with us, and I pray God blesses you, and, and blesses wherever you live, wherever you, you're coming in from. The, and if y'all want to tell us where you're coming in, yes, Mansu, thank you. I see that, Highlander. I'm, I'm blessing, yes, we, we're sending blessings to you and your loved ones also, and we're thanking the Holy Spirit for filling everybody, landing, just covering everybody that's on here tonight, in Jesus' name. Jeremiah tells us how important the word is in our lives. And the Lord said to him, Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. The Lord Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, the Father God himself is involved in this. And tonight the Lord's watching over the word coming out over this video to you into your lives until Jesus comes and to perform it in your lives. And I yield everything up to him. And I thank him for the work that he's doing tonight. So it's a spoken word that brings life. It's Jenny. Okay, I'm between UK and the US. Jenny, I'm so, yeah, that's easier. I'm so glad I know where you're from. And thank you for being here. And and we send this word into, into uh, the United Kingdom also. And Christina, honey, I'm glad you're back with us. The Holy Spirit just immerse you right now in the power and that truth, the word of God just sets all of us free and brings us closer into him. Draws us into him tonight. Jesus Christ is the high priest of our confession. The angels hearken to the word to perform it. So we're loosing the warring angels, the delivering angels, the uh, every type of good holy angel there is to go and minister to all of us and our loved ones tonight in Jesus' name. And uh, the Bible tells us in Psalm 104 that the angels hearken unto the word to perform it. They bring strength to the word, the voice of the word. Um, so that's where I, I wanted to say that. And I'm asking the Lord 
we're all in the process process of his wholeness bringing us into wholeness and and he loves us to keep and he keeps saying in the word out loud keep saying in the word out loud your promises that's and and command the devil to go and close all doors permanently to him you need to we bind every devil from hell right now that's trying to attack or confuse or, or uh, cause you to lose your attention here or call, we bind any principal in power working anywhere to stop anything and we thank God Almighty they're bound and silenced and rendered helpless and powerless there'll be no retribution no interference anywhere tonight in Jesus name Alina hi honey thank you for being here yes the angels are on assignment tonight yes oh you're Dave's girlfriend okay Jenny I'm so glad you're on here we love Dave <laughs> I'm so glad to get to meet you here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being on here. And I pray the Lord just blesses everybody, everyone coming on here tonight. I want to read these. Um, we ask the Lord to illuminate our minds. We're asking the Holy Spirit to that we hear and see the word that and that it that it illuminates our minds and that it is sealed in our minds, the word of God, truth, that we hear truth from the word tonight. We ask him to captivate us by his spirit. Draw us into the presence, his presence. Draw us, Lord. Cause us to run after you. Cause us to be hungry for the word of God. Cause us to want to know you. In every way possible to know you, Lord, we want to know you. Cause that. Put a burning fire in our hearts. And let us be aware when that when the warmth of your fire is burning so we don't walk away, but that we invite you to come in even deeper to teach us and to speak to us and to guide us and to, to let us partake of you with you, Lord. Let us be very conscious of the Spirit of God that's trying to minister to us tonight in every way in Jesus' name. And Jesus, Allison, hi, honey. Thank you for coming on. And Dawn, and just the Lord bless y'all. In Jesus' name. I ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten us, to revive us, to restore us, renew us in every way, in every, to rejuvenate us in every way. Fill us to run and over. Let our cups run over tonight. Let our cups run over. That we're so full of you, Holy Spirit, Jesus that your Holy Spirit is so full that it's up brimming over and running over and runs over in, into the presence of anybody that's around us and changes their lives. Restore us, Lord God. We want to be restored and be totally, totally on fire for you in Jesus' name. So, uh, Master's Touch Ministry, this is what I'm releasing over all of us. Isaiah 61 is what Master's Touch Ministry is all about. And I'm releasing the Master's Touch, Jesus Christ himself, through the power of the Holy Spirit, to touch every one of you tonight. Everyone. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon us. It says me, but it's us if you're a Christian. Because the Lord has anointed us to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent us to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and freedom to those in prison. And there are a lot of people in prison tonight. Uh, it's a spiritual prison. It's an emotional prison. It's a mental prison. It's all, all types of prisons to do with the with the soul, the mind, the will, and, and even physical prisons where we're sick and we can't seem to recover. To grant those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garment of praise, start praising for the spirit of heaviness, the oil of gladness instead of mourning. So that we will be called the trees of, of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Everything he does is so that he will be glorified, glorified through our lives. So he's here to set the captives free tonight. He's here to heal the sick. He's here to break through where there's been walls and, and barricades and and cement that's kept you from breaking through. You almost get through and you don't get through. God's breaking through for you tonight by the power of Almighty God and the power of the Holy Spirit and even the holy angels are working to bring that breakthrough for you. We're asking for fresh oil tonight. Fresh, pure, holy oil right from the throne room tonight to be poured in us and over us and through us. That will go with us and that, that, that it's totally takes us into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and, and changes lives around us. In Jesus' name. 
I'm going to read some scriptures, then I'm going to read the healings he gave me. But I told you, dislocated soldier, shoulder, he gave me while I was opening up just then, which was not on that list. These are deliverance men, word of God, that's the life. Everything is, this word is life. This word is Jesus Christ I'm releasing into the airways tonight. And I am thanking the Lord for taking this and work, working powerful things in lives. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You deliver me from all my troubles. From the Lord comes deliverance. The Lord will deli deliver the needy when they cry. It's from a heart. The blood of Jesus Christ, his, his son, delivers us from all unrighteousness. We are more than conquerors through Christ, through him who loved us. Now, that's everybody that knows him. We're more than, not just conquerors, more than conquerors. The law of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. And and a lot of stuff we need, need to be delivered from is stuff that's handed down, sins and stuff, and stuff we've done, we you know, before we even met him. He won. But the spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also quicken, give life to you, to your body through the spirit that dwells in you. Thank you, Lord. With God, all things are possible. So there's not anything that's impossible with him. He's created all of this. He holds it split second. Nothing, everything is perfectly timed and nothing can touch it. And nothing can interrupt it. He's God. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but love, power, and the same mind. A lot of people deal with anxiety, which is unknown fears, and a lot of traumas back there. Someone that even causes a lot of it. And they can't connect back to the traumas. But the Lord wants you to know it's a spirit of fear is not from him. Not that kind of fear. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget all, not all his benefits, who forgives all of our sins. All, don't have any condom, con, con, condemnation. Repent. He forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Don't let anything stop you from believing that he heals all of our diseases. He bought them forth also with silver and gold. There was not one feeble one among them that was 40 years in the wilderness. Psalms, that's Psalms 105, 37. He sent his word and healed them. I'm sending his word to heal you now in Jesus' name and deliver them from their destruction. My word is life and health to a man's whole body, not just part of you, your whole body. Surely he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. We are healed, is what it says. Excuse me, that's Isaiah 53, 5. He will take sickness away from you, that's Exodus 23, 25. Heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved. And this is really a deliverance for healing because a lot of your a lot of things we deal with in in the physical are demonic, and therefore all who devour you shall be devoured, and all your adversaries shall go into captivity. And those who plunder you shall be plundered, for I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds, saith the Lord. Therefore the Son of Righteousness will arise with healing in his wings. And by whose stripes you were healed. That's First Peter 2. You were healed. So you're fighting demonic forces. And uh, make sure you always stay. In communion says judge yourself so you won't be judged. So make sure you. And every day repent because no one is perfect. Jesus Christ was the only perfect one. We're striving to be. The love he's put in us is the love for him. We're striving to be like him. So repent so there's not something like that holding you in bondage. A broken heart, anything, sadness, sorrow, all those kind of things can open you up to, um, to attacks. And the Lord knows that. He knows that, but he's given us a word to bring healing to those mourning and the broken hearts and all. Luke 6, 19, he says, he healed them all. He healed them all. He went about doing good and healing all those that were that were not possessed by the devil, but that were were touched by the devil. He healed all those that the devil had messed up with and taken their help. These signs shall follow those who believe in my name. They shall drive out demons. 
They will lay hands on the sick and they will, they will recover. Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. That's what I was trying to say. And that is Acts 10, 38. And 1 John 3, 8. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. And I, that's all the scriptures that I'm going to read. We read them every night. And, I, and right now, the thief comes to rob, steal, and kill. And Jesus said, I have come that you would have life and have it abundantly. So I'm releasing that abundant life on all of us tonight. And I'm releasing the, as Jesus has stretched out, the master's touch his healing hands now and starts healing the people coming on, the people that will hear this in the weeks and months to come, the ones that will be watching it tomorrow, that the healing is flowing and deliverance is flowing. Now this is what he's given me just today. And I just put the dislocated shoulder. The Lord's healing somebody's dislocated. It's giving them a lot of trouble. These are some prayer requests that have been asked to just keep on here. Uh, there's a, a, a pastor that cannot sleep. And uh, he's in another state. And I, I just recently prayed with him. But he still cannot. I mean, it's critical that he's able to sleep. So y'all agree that the, whatever it's chemistry or if it's an enemy, or whatever it is, regardless, it has to go, and he's going to start sleeping tonight in Jesus' name. And then there's a young man that's dealing with the python spirit. You may not be familiar with that. You can look it up. It has a lot of ins and outs with it. Pray he gets totally delivered from all the things that's coming with it in Jesus' name. And then a Down syndrome and the, an alopecia that this child has. And so we pray God's doing a miraculous cellular all the way down to the chromosomes, the genetics, the sperm, and the egg, and healing this child in Jesus' name. Totally healing them miraculously. And then there's a young lady uh, from uh, Iowa, and she, she doesn't have any of this to come on. But she somehow or another found it on YouTube, and these are on YouTube. And um, she has a terrible digestive problem. I mean, really bad. So we agree that she's healed. Now, these are the healings that he's given me. Um, oh, this was one that was sent in today. Someone's in their trimester in, their, in pregnancy, ready, almost ready, and they came, they've came. they just been diagnosed with COVID. Just you agree that the mother and the baby will not have any side effects and that her lungs stay open, there'll be no blood clots. Okay, a lazy eye's being healed contracture uh, some contracture where something's contracted god's relaxing it and it's being healed a dumping syndrome is being healed see we're in foreign countries so if i you know if you hear something that doesn't sound right this is what the lord's saying and i'm giving it exactly the way he's giving it to me a dumping syndrome is being healed tonight typhoid fever is being healed parasites are being destroyed and healed and he gave me the word a harlot spirit. So I don't know who that is. Or if there's a lot of We break a harlot. We break it off or whoever. Lord Jesus, this is your words and you're doing it. You give them to me, you do it. You, the Holy Spirit's doing it. A systemic problem, a systemic. Like a whole system's messed up. It's being healed. Numbness in arms. Now, that's probably vertebrae disc. So we ask God to heal the neck, the spine, the hips, the lower spine. The legs, the feet heal everything to do, and the nervous system, all, everything to do with with anything to do with numbness in any part of your body. In Jesus' name, of my body, anybody's shingles are being healed right now. The Lord is healing that virus and destroying it. In Jesus' name, lymphoma, and this was really loud. Someone's going to be know someone or watching now tonight. It's just been diagnosed with lymphoma. You, it, the Lord's just healing you. It's coming out of your body, and it can never. We're saying these all are permanent deliverances and healings, and they can never come back, never, or any other form in Jesus' name. Diphtheria is being healed. Fungus, some funguses are being healed. Rheumatoid arthritis is leaving someone. And when I say someone, it could be several. I don't know. This is just what the sugar diabetes is being healed. A liver disease. I'm not sure what it is. You said a liver disease. And um, I'm not sure what that is. 
I'll have to pray the Lord she gives me that. It looks like drowning in sorrow. Someone's drowning in a broken heart and sorrow. No, the Lord's pulling you up tonight and giving and renewing you and giving you a new insight into all of this and changing it. Yes, it's drowning. And and you're going to be delivered tonight, he said. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord's delivering you tonight. Now we're going to start on our teaching. What time is it? It's 10 to 9 already. See, time gets away. Oh, my goodness. We just thank the Lord for what he's doing. So we ask the Lord to bless this teaching. We thank him for the healings and deliverances that he gave me, and they will happen over, you know, this will be on on for months, this one right here. In fact, some of them are coming up on up on YouTube or up on my my either my webpage or something coming up and I'm just and they're coming from from YouTube over and they some of them were like three years ago, but it's okay. The Lord wants somebody to see it. So there it and one's come up two or three times. I want to tell you I'll tell you something that um, I, I'm messed up with, with uh, Facebook some kind of way, and I'm so grateful for Facebook. I am so grateful for Facebook. It's my way of sharing what the Lord wants me to share. And it's our way of getting healings and deliverances to people. In truth, the Word. I'm a Word person. So, you know, I told you to, put, to click like, and you have been, and they keep account of that on a page that I can see. And it's been 3,000 and way on up there in 3,000. And then over on another page, they'll they'll tell me how many likes I've had this week, which is always, I think this past week was 12 or 11 or something. I don't know. Instead of the likes over there going up, that it's going down. It was way up in three, now it's down to two thousand. Every week it goes down, even though they're showing me the likes that are coming in. And I don't know if that's a mistake. I just say, I ask y'all to pray that everything gets cleared up to do anything to do with Master's Touch Ministries. And that it, and so I'm not looking at any statistics anymore because they're all, they're messed up. This has been going on for weeks and I've known it, but I didn't know how to fix it. So I'm just sharing it with you. You just agree everything. Jerry, I'm so glad you're on here, honey. And Alina, uh, breast cancer. We commend that breast cancer. That biopsy will come back negative in the name of Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus. All cancer is bound and broken. We bind the demon of cancer that goes in where there's a weak place and we break the spirit of the thing and we command it to come out and that person be healed. That biopsy, uh, there's two or three people on fixing and have biopsies. Every one of them coming back negative. There will not be cancer found in any of you because it is written by the stripes of Jesus Christ you are healed and we have power over all the power of Satan. And nothing can harm us in Jesus' name. Now, I want to read these scriptures. The Lord gave me this scripture after I got my teaching together and told me to really stress this. It's Matthew 16. Where, where I'm going tonight, where I pray I'm going, we'll see where, where we go. I just thank the Lord. I get so, I get, I'm trying to cross my leg under the table. <laughs> uh, I get, I get. I get tickled with the Lord because I think I'm going in one way and then he takes me some other ways. So we'll see where this goes. Matthew 16, 24, 26. I, Holy Spirit, I'm giving you this teaching. This is your meeting. This is your time to heal the sick, to deliver your broken people, to heal those broken hearted, to bring people out of prison cells, those that, are, uh, those that are mourning, those that are grieved over losing loved ones. Holy Spirit, I give it all to you. I I just raise us all up to you to have a new touch from the master tonight and whatever we need, Lord, that you are doing it. And I give you this teaching and every word that you anoint it with your fire power and they hear what you want them to hear and not, and may, and whatever I say makes sense in Jesus name. I give it to you, Holy Spirit. I'm turning myself over to you now. So Matthew 16, 24, 26, Jesus said to them all, this is always, I've got the King James Version. If any man comes after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Mary Hammond, honey, I'm glad you're here. And there's, uh, yes, y'all, yes, the people are coming on and you see a prayer request, you all agree that, that no one's having cancer. It is defeated tonight. That, that Come on here. So denying self. And take up his, your cross daily, my cross daily, deny self and take up my cross and follow me. That's what his word said there. 
And Jesus Christ was saying, nothing in life is worth losing what I have for you. Nothing in life is worth losing where I want to take you. And it's in denying yourself. And I looked up the Greek word denying, and it means a strong word. Uh, a complete denial of one's desires and willing to die for Christ. That's what the Greek denying means. Strong word. It's you refuse to think about themselves, where that where it comes an issue. You think, and this is where I'm going tonight. You refuse to think about yourself. That you know the word of God, and you go that way. Whatever it is, you go what the word says. Denying yourself to take up your cross, and cross means death. Everybody knew in back in the cross meant death. Usually they had to drag their cross, and then they died on it. So when he says take up your cross daily, he is telling us the same thing. The only way, denying yourself and following him is death to self. And the Greek, and deny self, and that's what Jesus said. Let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's, it is a, a delivering it's a delivering to you freedom. And Mark, that was Matthew 16, 24, but Mark 8, 34, Jesus tells them the same thing. Told them uh, the multitudes. It means what it meant to follow him. So that's, that's where we're going tonight. So let me start here. And I thank God for this teaching, and I pray the heart of the Lord God, his heart comes out in this. Holy Spirit uh, is going to teach us tonight. And, you know, when I'm preparing all of this, the Lord is just ministering to me and reminding me. I've walked with the Lord now many, many years since I was 25. And I tell you that and I'll be 82 in May, so a lot of years. And I've, I've gone through a lot of experiences with him. And I wouldn't give up. I wouldn't give anything. You couldn't give me anything to take me back. It's just and give up anything that I've that he's taught me in all of it. I'm asking him tonight to, uh, to anoint our eyes and ears to hear truth that breaks bondages. Truth, the word breaks bondages. Truth is the word. It's Jesus. The power is to break the bondage and to break the power of sin in our lives. Bondages that we can't do. Our, the anointing, I'm asking him to anoint our minds, our thoughts, our minds and our thoughts to retain truth tonight. That the devil can't rob it from you. It's not going to fall on a stony ground. It's falling on rich soil tonight. Mine and all of yours and anybody that ever sees this. Oh, I see all these cancers coming up. Everybody agree they're healed in Jesus' name. So John 15 says, I am, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you abide in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. So we're after, we're, if you abide in me and I in you. And I, the word abide means this. And you need to think about this because he's talking to you. He's talking to me as an individual. He died for you individually, every one of us. As if there were no one else but you. This is what he's saying to you. Abide in me. Abide in the vine. This is John. Abide means to reside. <clears throat> it means to tarry. It means to hunger after. It means a resident, that you resident means you live there, you settle and remain. Now remember that because it's critical to understand all of this. So, and then John 5, 6, he says, Jesus says the thing, tells us, if we don't abide in him, in the, the branch, your branch, he says, uh, it will be thrown away and wither. And thrown into the fire and burned. If you don't abide. He says abide in me. That means continually abiding. That means continually just eating the word. Just getting the word in you. So it's life. It's him. You've got to do that. You, We each are responsible for our lives. Personally to the Lord Jesus. And then we are corporate for each other. We are knitted together in him. If you abide and remain, he says, in me, and my word remains in you, ask whatever you will, and it will be given you. That's what he said. 
he's telling us to make sure you remain, you will experience greater depths of Jesus if you do. Greater depths, you in you, that no one can take away. And it's so personal and so precious. So it's up to you to make sure you, you abide and you remain and it's your residence in him. You are drawn into him as you seek him, as you abide and remain in him. It's his word. You remain in my word and his word. He wants the word in you and him. That's him. He, the word and his presence of Jesus transforms every one of us. The word with his presence, which is his anointing on it, transforms every one of us into fine gold, which was a sanctuary, what was in the sanctuary. Do you understand? You are his sanctuary. I am his sanctuary. Brian Ranga, I'm glad, you, glad you're on here, honey. Oh, okay, we see that on the ventilators, two vi vi presence of... Y'all, we agreeing that they're being healed tonight. We command their lungs to open up and not ever close up again. We And no blood clots in Jesus' name. We bind death off of them and release life on all the COVID patients that are dying and, and to bring life back to them. Jeremiah was talking about uh, Israel in the day when Israel was beautiful and was filled with God's glory. And, and then there was a time, and gold, the golden glory. And then there was a time that he sees it as dull gold. And, and he goes on to tell us that uh, it was a time when Jehovah Shammah dwelt among them. God is here. And something happened that they lost it and the gold became dull. With no, he said the holiness failed. The holiness failed. And when it failed, the gold, his glory that represents gold, was dull. And so, and I said, I apply it to me today, Lord. I apply that to me today. Don't ever let what, what you've given me to ever become dull because of my uh, um, not being serious, how serious it is, what he's saying about abiding in him. And that is, we're responsible, each one, to do that. So that not we don't get dull, but we get brighter and brighter with his presence in our lives and with his glory. It's a time for the church, us. And I know the Lord's moving, but I tell you, that we as the church, it, you know, the church, I'm not talking about like a denomination. I'm talking about me and you and everybody. It's a time for us to really do heart searching. We need to seek and we need to repent and we need to return back to him to our first love. And I mean, be drawn back that, the, that, that we see how desperate we are to be filled with his glory. So the world in this darkness can see the glow of his spirit. We're asking tonight that the Lord brings back his glory to the church like it was, like it's been different times in history. We need the glory. We need his presence. We need his word. We need his life flowing again. We need to stay. We need to reside in him. And when we do, that's where it will be found. We got to take hold and let go so he can restore the beauty to his bride. The bride of Christ. Each one of us make up his, his body. We are his bride. You're part of it. I'm part of it. Everyone on here that knows Regina, honey, everyone on here that knows Jesus, you're part of his body. We all have different functions, but we all need to abide and stay and reside in his, with him. We've got to press in until you, the whole thing is to press in until you surrender and, 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 to, and to embrace all that the cross, all of our inheritance is ours in the cross. It's where we, where we abide under the shadow of the Almighty, where we're hidden in the clefts of the rock, hidden in Him, place we can uh, partake of our inheritance that He bought for us when He, and it was a great price, it was His blood that brought us into the blood covenant and all the inheritance that goes with that covenant is ours in Christ Jesus. John 17, 3. This, th we think about it. When we read this, we think about eternity. It's talking about right now. This is eternal life 
that we might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. This is this is eternal life now. Not it starts now. Your eternal life starts now. That we might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. We might know him. He wants us to know him where he dwells. Not occasionally, but that we know him and that it's growing. This relationship is growing. Now, the, I have to go back here because I, I've done many teachings on the um, tabernacle and the three areas and what it means to the believer. That is the believer's walk. And I've shared a lot of it, but I've done like like uh, two months when I was being money to do, two months to do the whole teaching. It's, it's intense. But every step is a Christian. From the time you come through the first gate, there's three sections. And what I'm getting to tonight is the life section, the Holy of Holies, where he wants us to go. And do you understand there were three sections? The outer court, which was sunlight. That's what lit it. And then the inner court, which was in the center. And that was lit by the, can the, the holy oil, the candlesticks. Revelation knowledge, the bread of showbread. It was all in there where you learn truth. It's all about um, being very connected with Jesus. And it's, it's truth. You learn, you, there's where you find truth. You washed in the, uh, out in the outer court, you washed in the water, and then you go into the middle court, and there's where it's illuminated with the glory, with the Spirit of God. It's uh, all about the Spirit and worship and all. Well, this is what they were. The outer court was called the way. The middle court was called truth. But the back court, the holy of holies, was called life. And most Christians stay either in the middle court and they're learning truth. But they haven't moved on into the holy of holies, which is called life. And they wanted to kill Jesus when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Because the Jews knew what that was called what those sections were called in the tabernacle it was holy to them because in that back court was the holy God and the supernatural. And the truth is, in the inner court is where you prepare to go into that holy of holies. And we're all invited. It's all Jesus tore the um there was a he heavy veil between the inner court and the holy of holies. And when Jesus died the the veil of the temple was split from top to bottom. And we are the temple now. And the veil that we have is our flesh. We have the same thing. And we've got to let God Almighty rip it apart. He did on Calvary, but we've got to let him rip our flesh apart so we can enter into that life. And it's a continual walking with him. It's a continual walking in the spirit. It's a continual manifesting himself wherever you are. It's life. It is called life. And I am praying tonight you hear this. The veil... Is our flesh that keeps us out of there, out of the supernatural. But it's not the supernatural. You, it's the intense, in-depth saturating of the Spirit of God in your life. It's, it's total freedom because you've been willing to pay the price to let him deal. And it's all through the deliverance ministry. It's all through the Word of God, taking the Word of God. And when it says to love your neighbor, when it says to do this, do that, that's what you do. You choose. You can't do it. You take the word. You go to God with it. You pray. He ha you have to, all you have to do is surrender. Repent and surrender and let him take it from you. And then it's a perfect healing. It's gone. It's like it's never been there before. I can tell you that because I've come through a lot of stuff in my life. And he has taken it and taken it. And every time he takes something else, I'm more and more over in there. He wants to split that will, that soul, that mind, the will and the motions where you're in control, where you don't surrender to the word, you surrender to your flesh and what you want, and you're not surrendering to what you know the word says. When things come up in your life daily, surrender. Go to him and say, Lord, I surrender. I'm giving it to you. Take it. I want to know you. I want to know the fullness of you. I want to be filled with life, the life of the spirit of God. And don't let that soulish part of you destroy you or keep you back. And it is a process and you have to, it's a daily decision. It's a daily decision. 
1 John 1, 3 says, uh, uh, they said, truly, we have fellowship with the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ. And, and it says in 1 John 1, 3, we have seen him, we have handled him, and we have looked upon him. You have to surrender. It's not covering something and making the right decision now. It's a total surrender so the thing, the root of it is gone. Like when you know you have um, an angry spirit. You know that because you read the word of God. The word says be not angry. And you, don't let the sun go down on your anger. You know, deal with it. You, you deal with it. You go and say, Lord, take this anger out of me. If it goes beyond that, you've got to know you've got to give it up. You have to surrender. Say, Lord, I don't want it anymore. I don't want that to be in my will. My will. I want your will. I'm, I'm repenting. Deliver me. It's the word that shows you what you need to let go of in the spirit, in the in the soulish realm. And it's not a covering. It is. It's where you move into the spirit of God, and the the problem that is gone. It's a supernatural. He doesn't want to take your heart and 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 cover it and deal here and here and put it back. He wants to give you a new heart, a new. And when I'm talking about the heart, I'm talking about where you, the soul, where you make decisions, what you're going to do daily with whatever's going on in your life. I hope you understand that. And the, there was death. Only one person could go in the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle. Because Jesus hadn't died and made the way for us. And it was the high priest. And only one went. He only went once a year. And he took blood to cover everything. Or he would have been death. And, but for us, we can go. But it means death to us too. It means death to go where he wants us to go. Where we're walking in the spirit. Where we're walking in the supernatural. But mostly where we're walking with him. That he is alive. It's reality. It is a reality. That every he wants us all to walk in. And it's a degree, and we will. I want more and more and more. I want more and more and more. I'm. I will never be satisfied till I'm totally with Him, and that I do know. Thank you, Jesus. It's our great. It's a great promise to us to let that veil be split, that you don't hide behind anything that the Word says you need to let go of. Surrender. There's a surrender in your spirit, your total being. You're broken before the Lord, totally hopeless and broken. He has to, he has to take it, because you can't, and then it's gone. Then it's gone, and it's gone. It doesn't come back. It's gone. If a memory comes back, there's no pain with it. It's gone. The disciples were walking with Jesus, and some of this I've shared before, but I have new people on here every week, and uh, through the days that will be listening to this. In Luke 24, 10, it said the disciples were walking with Jesus. And that as they walked, it was getting near night. And uh, and they turned in. And Jesus was like he was just going to go on. And he would have gone on. And a lot of times, we're walking with Jesus. And we want to turn in. Take it. You know that something's inside of you. You know he's there. You want to go on and do your own thing or whatever. Invite him to go with you. Don't let him keep you. When, when you feel him, embrace him. He's there for, he wants to be embraced. He wants to know you love his presence. He wants to know you want him with your whole heart, mind, and soul. Invite him in. So had they missed that, they would have missed a, a, an incredible experience with him because he went in and he broke bread and their eyes were open and they realized it was Jesus. So invite him wherever you're going. If you if you feel his presence and you have to go off and do something, invite him to go with you. He wants to go with you. He wants to he wants to reveal himself to you. And no matter what you're doing, or no matter how it was night, so they were tired. Doesn't matter. Invite him to go with you to get ready for your night season. It's a road to Emmaus. He wants to he wants to take you further. He wants to take you further than just walking with you, and then you go on. He wants to know you want to go. You want him to go with you. He he has he he has feelings. He, he it says when he reclined at the table and broke the bread, they recognized him. You will recognize him because you've invited him to go with you wherever you're going tonight, tomorrow, 
he wants to be totally in your life. He wants you walking in the spirit, which is his spirit. So if you will allow the Holy Spirit to touch you, your life tonight, I'm, I'm begging you because I, I can tell you, you don't want to go any other way. There's so much peace. No matter, there's, I, I've got this stuff going on everywhere, but there's such a, you, he speaks to you. He gives you, he, he gives you words. So you know what you to do and your life tonight, what I want to show with you, share with you, he will change your life. What I'm telling you will absolutely change your life. You take the word, you stay in the word. That's, that's him. And that word reflects into you what needs to be changed. And then you go to the cross. Take up your cross. That means you're going to have to die too. When you take up your cross, it means death. And follow him, he says. That was the first scripture I read. If you want to abide in him, you have to take up your cross and follow him, which means death. And that's that flesh thing. That's that veil. That's that thing that you had hide under the thing that controls you, the things that you've done all your life. It's things your family did. It's familiar to you, but it doesn't line up with the word. You got to go to the cross and you stay at the foot of the, you stay at the, at the, on your, your heart at the foot of the cross till Jesus Christ deliver, you surrender it and let Jesus Christ deliver you. And he paid a, in, in a price and it's his blood. It's the blood that put us in the blood covenant that so we can have it everything. We can have it all, but it's up to us how, how much we want to do. So I'm asking you tonight, where are you in your walk with Jesus? Where are you in taking the word and letting the word reflect into you and show you areas you need to change? And are you willing to do it? Are you willing to do it? Every time you let something go, more of his richness comes into you. I can tell you it, it, it's a process, but oh, you won't be sorry. You willfully, willfully, you willfully want to follow him and do what's right. It's happened in my life, and it happened many years ago. It actually happened when I was 27 years old because I met Jesus when I was 25, and I was in a church, and you all know that. I didn't know him. I didn't know how to find him. But I, he found me and saved me. But at 27, we were invited to a full gospel businessman's fellowship meeting. And for the first time in my life, my life, had I had never heard of the gifts of the Spirit. I did not even know the work of the Spirit. And that night, it, it, we were introduced to this marvelous friend, this companion that has never left us. He was with us when we were born again. He came in. Well, I knew the I knew the I knew the joy in all of salvation. And I knew the joy of being set free from all of my sins, being forgiven. But then now now I'm learning that he wants to be my companion. We were learning that. He is a person with power, and that's who he wants to be to you. And it's in the form of the Holy Spirit. That is Jesus' spirit, and the word of God is Jesus. Now he came when I had four small you know, we were introduced to this when I had four we had four very young children. And, and and we're very busy, but oh my goodness, it turned our world upside down. It was our mind, our will, and emotions. All of this has a lot to do with where you are with the Lord because in those damaged places that we've covered over, that the Spirit, when Jesus came into you, He came into you with love. God is love. So in your spirit is all this love from Him. And, he, and you know how much he loved you because he came in. Then you realize he created you. But that love can't express itself because of the soulish part of most of us. And we can express it sometimes, but there's so much pain in there and so many things going on in us that the soul is the veil that the Lord wants to heal. So that, the, that the, your mind, your will, and your emotions are saturated in love. It's his love. As he pulls stuff out, stuff, stuff, this garbage, this rubbish out of us, he then sends in his love, the Spirit of God. He is love. Anywhere he comes, he brings love. He's love. Some of the, sad, the greatest griefs I've had in life is that the, it, because of a ministry, I'm responsible to the Lord to keep this ministry the way he wants it. Not the enemy. I'm responsible to the Lord. He called me, and I've had to let people go that I've loved. Dearly, dearly, will always love, will always pray for them. 
pray the best for them, that they find whatever it is that you know, they need to find. But that's one of been the greatest grief of, griefs of mine because I love people and I hurt for people. And, it's, and, it, and there's a sadness with that. And you don't, and I will never do it until I know the Holy Spirit says, now it's time to let them go. And it's, it's been a really, that's been the hardest thing of this ministry of everything is obeying the Spirit of God. And I have to lay my life down and know that it's love because I'll, he comes first and he says, there's something here that's not blended right. You've got to let them go. And it, the Lord, maybe it's because the Lord knows they need to go on somewhere. I don't know. But the grief for me is to have to let them go. Because I, they won't ever come on this team unless I'm in deeply believe God called them in this the ministry with me. And they go through a whole lot to be on this ministry team. So it's not a light thing to be on this ministry team. And the people praying here, the ones on here tonight, have gone through a lot to be here as a ministry team praying for you. We're very careful with who lays hands on anybody in this ministry. James 1.21 says, Lay aside all filthiness. So if that's part of what's in you, you've got to decide tonight I'm letting it go. Or any kind of wickedness or malice that remains, you decide tonight, go to the foot of the cross and cry out and, and surrender to the Lord in repentance and brokenness and total helplessness. And he will deliver you. And what it goes on to say when you do, and receive with meekness the implanted word. You've got to hear this. Receive in meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions. It's the word again, reflected into you what's not like Jesus. And then you have to have the will to surrender and and give it up and stay with it till it's gone, till Jesus gets the roots out of there. But it's total surrender and brokenness because you don't want to hurt the Lord. You're carrying his you're carrying his name if you're a Christian. And we are responsible for what we're reflecting in the world. We've got it, he, we've got everything we need to walk this life. And there's a period of time where he cleans you up and you don't know which way you're going. You just know you love him and you know he's with you. And sometimes you think, well, I think I'm going to die. I'm not going to make it. But he always, if you're after him and you're surrendering to him, he will always pull you through. And, and that becomes your fruit of faith that no one can take from you because you know, you know, he's faithful. John 1 23 says John the Baptist was crying in the wilderness pre prepare the way of the Lord and you know you, we have wildernesses it's our soul we have our own wilderness and he's crying the Holy Spirit's crying in us in our wilderness prepare the way of the Lord to come in and and turn that wilderness into a fruitful land the new covenant wilderness equates to our souls a lot of wilderness. I had a lot of wilderness in my soul. And Jesus has planted his fruitfulness. And I don't know what else is left of me. Only God knows. I'm well, I'm saying, Lord, God, show me. And when I'm reading the word, show me where I need to, to surrender, where I need to change, where whatever. He's faithful. If you are after him, he's faithful to get you there. It's a part of the soul we haven't given to him. It's the part is it's the wilderness in us. And he's trying to bring life into that wilderness. He's trying to bring joy into that wilderness. He's trying to bring his good things into your wilderness. So there's no wilderness anymore. And Jesus saying, I'm saying, Lord, let them get this. Butch Jetter, thank you for coming on, honey. I pray the Holy Spirit falls on you, falls on you, and does whatever you need tonight. And all that sciatic nerve pain has to go to, and all the cancers. All of, we just thank God he's going to call out healings after I finish here. Because when he calls them out, they happen. You, you all have to know that. I've tried to put a lot of them out on face, on Master Touch Ministries page. Uh, you, you'll find a lot, not a lot of the testimonies, but not, not even one third of them. Isaiah 20, 21, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our Lord. 
are you in a desert tonight? Do you feel like you're in a wilderness? Do you feel like you've been there forever? I'm telling you the keys is to abide in him. And that means to get into the word and abide and let him start changing your wilderness, changing your desert. He wants to bring new life to you. He wants to fill you with fruitfulness. He wants to, you, to, to he, the truth is he's trying to get us where we're walking in the spirit. And if you've got all this flesh stuff, the soulish stuff messed up, half the time you're battling that and trying to, you know, let it go. It's not worth holding on. Surrender. Surrender. Want him more than you want your way, your willful way. Want him more than that. And that means, and when I say surrender and abide in him, that means he's going to, you're be, going to be called on to, your life will be spent in doing his work. And you can't retire. If he's called you, you can, how can you retire from something he's called you to? I don't think any of the disciples ever did. He called him. If he's called you, you won't retire. You will spend the rest of your life trying to, to grow in him and to please the master because of how much he loves you. First is how much he loves you and me. And that heart of his love draws you and wants you to help everybody you know to, get, to find what you found because it's a, it's a pearl of great price. There's no, there's no price on it. It's, his, it's him. You have to take you, the word of God for your medicine to heal your soul. Not, not Maalox or prescription. It's the word that heals your soul. And a surrender as you get it. The word speaks to you and surrendering into it. He wants, to, he, wants to be, he wants you rooted and grounded in him. Rooted, that soul, the part of you that makes you click, the part of you that makes who you are. To be rooted and grounded in him. And the only way is through the word. Getting the word. And pr prayer. And seeking him. Do you know faith works by love? It's in Galatians. And he filled you with love and salvation. And, and, that, and that love has faith with it. And he's trying to clean us up so we can just be melted in his love. And melt in, into love into people's lives. They're looking, the world's looking for something real. And they're looking for love. To, I mean, like, not words, action. Love brings action. Jesus loved with action that he laid his life, hung on that cross. Let them pull his beard out. They said, they put up something over his eyes and they plucked his beard out. And he was marred like, no one has ever been marred like him. He, you, they could, you couldn't even recognize him. That's love. And all he's asking us to do is give up those selfish wills. Give up to follow him and to abide in him and to walk in him. In Jesus' name, Lord God, help us to the right to surrender our baggage, to give it up, to give up the control, to find you, find you in the depths of the places. What time is it? 9.30. Okay, we're doing good. Let a, the Holy Spirit do a complete work in you tonight. Get all that stubble out of you, all that rubbish out of you at the rubbish gate, the chaff. He wants to get the chaff out of us so that we, we, that we, it's easy to love because we know love. We found him. Jeremiah 18, he's molding us. If you're surrender, he wants to mold you into that new not not fix your heart, but a new heart. He wants to give you a totally new heart that you become a new person in him. Not somebody that you, that's got band-aids here and there and you cover it sometimes and sometimes you can't. No, he wants to get all those broken emotions, all those torn up emotions, all those, all the traumas of the emotions, all of that out of this. It causes you to do this and that. He wants to, he wants to heal you. And it's free, but the it, the cost it cost you it cost you to death to self to find him, to give it up, surrender that will, surrender that soul, surrender the pain, surrender the rejection, surrender the drugs, surrender the alcohol, surrender the orphan spirit, surrender the regrets, the broken heart, surrender the broken marriages, the children, incest, rape, surrender it. Don't hold on to it. Surrender it to him.
and let him make you whole. May where you're in pain, he wants to make put love there. That just comes out of you. No one would ever know where you've been because it's so gone from who you are and what you what the world sees in you. And all of this is that fruit he's working in you. He every time he takes you through something else, he's making it juicier and juicier. And it's fruit that people love to to to, to eat on. That's what he's trying to do with all of us. He doesn't want us to hide anything or polish over anything or blame others. You've got to quit blaming. You, you're responsible for yourself. Yes, we've all been through things we wish it could have been differently, but it's not. And the Lord wants to make you over right where you are so it's like it never happened as far as how you are feeling inside because it's so gone. The pain and the rejection and the hurt and the abuse and all of that is gone. He wants to heal you. Oh my goodness. And tonight I'm asking Jesus if you're willing to surrender like I'm talking about. So that veil is split. Jesus has already done it, but you've got to be willing to surrender to experience it. Show us any area in us that we that we need to that's not lining up with what you want us to be, to be like you. Take us to the foot of the cross, Lord, and we surrender it tonight, Juliana. Thank you, honey, for coming on. Blessing you. Bless you, honey. Bless you. He wants to, He wants to you to surrender right at the cross. He's not blaming you. He. That's why he died. That's why he understands it. He went through. He, he saw how humanity was. That's what he knew. We couldn't save ourselves. He paid the price to save us, and he's given us all the tools in the Word and the power of the Spirit of God that's in you at salvation to bring you through to a place where you can really surrender. He wants the pain gone. He wants you pliable at the cross, pliable to, his, to the Word so he can work in you what he wants to work in you. I, taught, I spoke one time, it's at the cross that Jesus Christ exchanges our broken soul for his wholeness. The Holy Spirit at the, at the cross takes our broken souls, our bruised souls, our wounded souls, which is your mind, your will, and your confusion. He wants to exchange it at the cross for his wholeness. And it is a process, but you've got to start somewhere, so start tonight. If you haven't started, say tonight, Jesus, I'm going into your word to seek where I don't know what, where I'm wrong and right, your word will reflect you back to me and what you want me to be. And then surrender. And where it's hard, where there's some places that are really the will and all, and it's dug in so deep, the pain and all, you stay at the cross, crying out to him, and tell him you're helpless to let it go. You're helpless to surrender it. And ask him to, to take it, to, to bring you to that place where you're so broken, that you can't hold on to it. That's where he'll take you. That you're so broken that you can't hold on to it anymore. It's either die yourself because you can't hold the pain or surrender. That's where he's going to take you. It's where he went in the garden of Gethsemane and was sweating blood. And he said, not my will, but your will be done. He's saying the same thing to you and I tonight. Not your will, but my will be done in your life, Linda. I'm saying, yes, Jesus, your will be done in my life. Your word I love. He wants to work that into us. Oh, it, some places in the Bible it talked about the golden coins and all and the grain and all. And But the thrasher, the thrasher, thrasher comes and gets the, that golden kernel out of all the stuff that's wrapped around it. It's a lot of pain in that. And that's what Jesus does with the Spirit of God as we surrender. He will use... I, I won't tell you why you need to surrender. You don't want to wait till you're in trouble or... or and, or he's had to bring you to a place that you surrender because he loves you that so much. I'm saying tonight, and y'all heard me say this, Jesus, I don't want to be in pain anymore. So I'm willing to just show me what it is that you want to change in me now. I'm going to, I'm going to face, I'm going to do whatever I have to do. I'm letting it go. I'm surrendering it because I don't want to have to go through trials. And the, it's called the trials of your faith. And I, and you know, I, my faith is, I'm saying, Lord, show me what it is 
And the the word of God gives me faith to know I can let it go. I just do that. I don't want to stop, I don't want to go through anything, any more trials, any more Lord, any more than it was not normal for us living in this world, you know, and what we have to do to go out of here and go out of here where he, the way he wants us to go out of here. You must open every door in your heart to him. Every door. The things you count most precious, you've got to open up to him and let him work the fruit, his fruit into it, his word into that place. Because he's got, he's after the golden corn that's in, corn that's in you or the wheat or whatever the grain is. He's after it in you and he's not going to get, he's, he want, he loves us so much that he will keep working to you, let, to you surrender. So surrender, surrender tonight, not your will, not your will. It's his will in you. Second Corinthians 4, 7, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the surpassing greatness of his power may be of God and not from ourselves. Do you hear what that's saying? We have this treasure with the earthen vessel that the surpassing greatness of the power may be of God and not for ourselves. That means ourselves got to go. So the power, his power is out here. Is flowing. And so this earthen vessel is now flowing in his power and it's not of ourselves. Yourself's got to go to find him. I, 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 if I can say anything else, you've got to let go of whatever it is. You've got to make time for him. You can't put him second. You have got to make time for him. He has to be first priority. You may not have a 15 minutes, but you make time for him first. David, the Bible's always saying, talking about seeking the Lord early and all, David. And I mean, I, I, everything changed when I started getting up. If, when I was nursing or RN, critical care, wherever I was working, I went to work one hour earlier. So I sat in that parking lot under light and prayed for my family and everybody I knew that, at that time. And I, every, and I read scripture, scripture, I prayed the scripture, the scripture, the scripture, what I, he had taught me at that point. So make time. You can do it. And the Lord somehow or another will give you, make it up to you in your sleep. I don't understand it all, but he will because he knows you're after him. And you're after him to change lives and to heal sick and heal the brokenhearted. It's not about you anymore. It's all about the body of Christ. We are his body here on earth. Ashley, honey, I love all Christina, all that. Thank y'all. It's death brings the Holy Spirit. Every time you let something go, it brings a new dimension of the Holy Spirit into your life. He takes over. He takes over the part that you let go of with his anointing. And he doesn't anoint dead. He, 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 he anoints dead people. The more you die to yourself, I get back to that. The more you die to yourself, the more he comes in with his power because you're after him. Actually, it's not, it's not, um, it's not a heavy load. It's you, you can't even wait to want to be with him. You can't wait for him to show you what needs to go next so you can have more of him. You're crying out for more of him. The more of him means the less of you. If you're crying for more of him, you have to understand this tonight. It's going to be less of you and your will. You've got to let it go. You've got to surrender. It's all about surrendering. And it's, it's, it's your cross. He says, take up your cross and follow. It's your cross. It's death to you and your, and your will for his will. And I forget where I wrote this down from, but it's, it's talking about your life. Is where Jesus said, I think it's Exodus 25, let them make me a sanctuary, not made with hands, a dwelling place. Do you understand? The tabernacle was his sanctuary. And the Holy of Holies, the very last where the veil was, that no one could go in. If they did, except the high priest. Of course, Jesus is our high priest and he split it. And it's our flesh. It's the veil of our flesh that we've got to let go of. 
He wants us back there dwelling in that, in that place, the place of the supernatural, the place where the glory is, the place where his fire and cloud is. He wants us to be fire people of the of fire, filled with the fire anointing of the Holy Spirit. And it's back there in, the, in that place where you have surrendered and the veil of your flesh has been so worked through by the word of God and the work of the Holy Spirit at the cross and the power of his blood to cleanse and set free. I'm asking tonight that he's setting you free as I'm speaking. He's reminding you of things you need to let go of. And if you, you, I ask God that, that you have such a desire to know him, such a desire to be a part of the move of this spirit, the glorious spirit, that you're willing to do whatever, sever. You're not going to be out here going to move us with filth in it. You're not going to. You don't want to. You don't want to contaminate your mind. It's your mind, your will, and your emotions that he's sanctifying. You you stay clean. You Jesus is holy. The Holy Spirit is holy. The Word of God is holy. It's all about holiness. And he's made a way for us to be daily, surrender more and more so we're more like him in walking in his holiness. It's his holiness. We can never, it's his righteousness. Once you're saved, you're saved. It doesn't matter if you want to go any further or not. You're saved because he has saved you. But he wants more out of us. He wants us to reflect who he is. And he paid a, a, a high price for us to walk there. He wants to purge us. He wants to get out of us all unforgiveness, all discord, all strife, everything Satan can use to keep you. See, it's the work of the enemy to keep us bound so we don't flow in this joy and love and peace it's satan's job and you've got everything we've got everything and if you need help with the body of christ find someone that knows about warfare and get with them and stay with them and surrender you keep saying to jesus i'm surrendering it pull the roots up he wants to step in and help you and he's waiting for you to invite him to help you because if you it's surrendering to him because you're in a place where you know you need help and you can't do it on your own. You, you won't do it on your own. You've got to have the word of God and the Holy Spirit's help. And it's totally falling in a heap and saying, I can't do it. I'm surrendering. I know what I want. I want this and, and deliver me so I can walk on with you, Lord. When you realize you can't, When you, you'll leave this and say, I'm going to do it. That's the wrong thing. I pray tonight you realize you can't do it. It is not you who can do it to get the results. It is the word you depend on and not you at the cross. His promises, his word that he will give you peace where you don't have peace. It's the word that you take to the cross and you stay there and surrender and and stay there until the Lord breaks that. He wants to, you to know that you have to surrender. It's it's his word working in you and the work of the Holy Spirit. And he doesn't want to stay uh, trapped in our minds, our will, in the emotions. He wants us to flow freely. That it's not a battle going on up and down all the time. That we're flowing. We're walking with him. It's a place where you walk with him. And I, I want to walk with him more. And it's, it's because of his love. It's not a human emotion I'm talking about. Even though that becomes real. It is a presence of God himself in your life. And you, don't, you will do anything to keep that presence. He is in love with you, and you know that, and you're in love with him. And that love just gets grows deeper and deeper. It's a place where the songs of Solomon, in the beginning she said, he is mine and I am his beloved. After she walked through all of that, and she spent too much time helping people, and, and, and uh, she, didn't, she didn't stay focused on the one she was in love with like she should have because she said, my brothers or something made me work till I was brown from the sun and all that you keep him first always and in keeping him first he you will be busy serving him but he's always first he comes first in everything and and he knows that you are doing that and that's the way you want 
that's the way you're going to live, that he's first. Not ministry is not first. It comes. It's he is first. He, him. As the word changes you, he wants to root you into, into that you're rooted and grounded in him. And this, this stuff you, Lori, the things that you have dealt with, been tormented with, God wants it out of you. It's, it's that thing. When you see it in the word and you know it's in you, you take it. You go to the cross. You start taking the word with you to Jesus. And you start crying out to him and tell him you, you've got to be delivered. And get people to help you if you need to. You know, I had to have people help me with some of the things that, that I was delivered from. A lot of it I got out myself just by saying the blood of Jesus a million times. I know if he's got a record up there, I've got th several books full of just the blood. The precious blood. And I didn't understand it all. I just knew it said you overcome Satan with the blood of the Lamb. But now I'm understanding more and more and more about this covenant of the covenant, the blood covenant that God always required to, to have fellowship with him. And it's a, it's a wonderful thing. And now when I say the blood, I'm realizing the price he paid so I can say it. And it has great power to, to cause, to deliver you. So you, you can, you're totally free from all of that. So take the word, read the word, chew on it. Something kind of, you've got to, when you read the word, and I have to, I, I, this happens to me a lot. I have to make sure that my mind is intent on what I'm reading because the enemy will have me think about this and that. You get along with God and you read the word so he can speak to you. And don't and get into a place where you're closed off with him. And there's nothing distracting you. And I found that, you know, I'm telling you, I get up between... Four and five use it. He wakes me up when he's ready for me to get up. And I'm up and I stay up. But And I'm not bragging about that. I'm just telling you that's the time I have to because if I didn't, I, he wouldn't be first in my life. And he has to be first place in my life. And in those times, he delivers, he shows me things. In those times, he speaks to me. I have questions. It's called the secret place. It's a place where you go and the world is shut out. It's you and him. And that's where he shows you things. That's where he talks to you. That's where he gives you wisdom. That's where he gives you answers to what you're asking him about. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. And you will be like a tree planted by the waters. That's the heart we have to have. It's Psalms. I forget what Psalms. His delight is in the law of the Lord, which is the written word. And his, his law... He meditates on. That's what I'm saying. When you go, even if it's 15 minutes, you shut everything out so you can hear what he is saying. In Jesus' name. I'm seeing this COVID thing and somebody's hanging on life. We command life. We bind death off of them. And we speak life. We command the lungs to open up, the blood clots to go, the vital signs to come up and come be healed and come out of there miraculously in Jesus' name. And when it, when meditate, when he says it meditates on it day and night, it means you roll it over and over and over. You moderate. And I remember one time I was teaching and, and I, I remember saying you like a cow, uh, choose it and she, she'll burp it up or something and she choose to cut again. She choose it until there's nothing left in it. That's what you have to do with the, what time you have with the Lord. It doesn't have to be a long time for him to speak to you. You know when he's, you've got to shut everything out. I mean, that's a that's a key in the word speaking to you. You can't, no matter what's going on around out here. And I, you know, we all have our lives. But it, that time has to be spent directly meditating on the word so that it, it speaks to you. And this is a good one. 1 John 3, 4. This is how we can tell we have passed from death unto life if we love the brethren. It's a love walk. It literally takes you into the love walk. It's a key to life. His love. It's the more excellent way. It is. He is trying to take his bride into the more excellent way. Everything I'm telling you is to take you into a love walk with him and then and you don't fight things. 
until he says, like I said, you have to let somebody go. There are things that issues that do come up. But even in that, it's the love. It's still the love. It's an intoxicated love. It's an into is he, he's intoxicated me with his love. When I drink from him, it's just there. It was there for this meeting started tonight. It's in, it's in, it's, 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 I'm not drunk in the spirit, but I'm filled with his glory, his, his, his love. I'm filled with the presence of Jesus. He wants you there. I want more. I'm telling you, I want more, more, more. I'm telling you about the victory I've found in his, in his love. And it's been a process over the years, but every year got, is better and better and better. Even when things happen that are very, very painful, he takes you through it. And as you surrender your will, I've had to call people and tell them I love them that has been just cruel to me. And I've watched it change their lives. Instead of blasting them, cursing them, I just told them how much I loved them. I was sorry whatever I ever did to, to hurt them. I've done it to people that really only God could get you to, to surrender to do. In this ministry, I've had a lot of false brethren, and I've had a lot of rejection because of this ministry through the years when no one wanted to talk about the deliverance ministry. I was on the front line, been on the front line since the day I found out about it, the day I met Jesus. And then when we were baptized in the Spirit at 27, the Lord called me. He called me into this ministry. No man called me. God Almighty called me, and he has been faithful. And he's calling you into your ministry. But it's cost, it costs you something to give up your life to find him. And in it, I've found so much love from so many people. It's just been, it's, it's been a wonderful, it's a, it, what happens is where you try to make things work, even when you thought they were working, you didn't know what the people were thinking about you or anything. This life, I know people love me because I love them. It's, a, it's, it's the love of Jesus that's shed abroad in our hearts one for another. That's what it is. And it's your choice daily. It's spiritual warfare. It really is spiritual warfare. It's, it's, you get to a place, you're always you're walking in the spirit and you stay close to Jesus. And the battle, you know, we will the enemy is always trying to work his way in. And but the Lord makes you very keen to it if you're walking in the spirit. Starla, I'm seeing uh, I'm seeing a lot of people on here. Thank you, Lord. I pray y'all are being blessed. Every one of you. Um and that he's paid the incredible price that I'll never stop seeing it is his blood. It was his blood that delivered me from so many things, just seeing the blood. And, and it's his blood that brings all of the inheritance to us. When he shed his blood, I'm not talking about when he was beaten, when he was plucked, and he was no man has been marred like him. He's not, I'm not talking about it. When he shed his blood, the blood covenant was made for you and I to receive all the inheritance that's ours in Christ Jesus. You'll yield. When you do something that you think that's against what you know you should do, you may enjoy it, but afterwards you will be very unhappy because you yielded to the flesh instead of surrendering to the spirit. That very thing that you thought would bring joy brings death in that area until you repent and get it straight. It's a serious thing to, to it's a serious thing to it. The Lord's willing to give you everything, but it's a serious walk with him. You can't take it lightly. He's a holy God. If you sow to the flesh, this is Galatians 6, you will of the flesh reap destruction. But if you sow to the spirit, you will reap life eternal. That's, hey, listen, you need to get that into your spirit. You can't, we're not, we're not, I'm not talking about a life of, of, um, not where you, that you don't, 
you're not willing to surrender. I'm talking about the life that's after the Lord to please him because of how much he loves you. You have tasted of him and you know he is good and you're willing to pay the price to surrender that will to know his will. You'll never know his will in every area, whatever, as long as you're staying in your will. It's his will, not your will. Surrender. The things that you think you can't get rid of, yes, you can. You can let it go. I'm almost through. Philippians 3.10, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. And that's dying, that is where Jesus gave up everything. It's where we have to do the same thing. We have to go to, get, to Gethsemane also. If we're going to take about it's a cross, which means death to self. It's behind the veil. It's it's back there where all the super, where God, where you walk in the spirit. Okay, for, let me read again. Philippians 3.10, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death. Philippians 3.10. We've had a, like a... Um, I don't even know what kind of religion, what we've been preaching. God is calling us into far more than what we hear. A feel good, they call it a feel good. Yes, you do feel good. But there's a price you pay. They forget to, t to teach this side. But the church is coming into its fullness. And all of you are going to be right in there. And in it is going to be what I'm teaching tonight. When you seek me with your whole heart, you will find me. And there'll be billows of his glory washing over you and, and following you in his presence. His presence consumes you. It, it just consumes you. Whatever you give up willingly, the Lord will bless it back to you with so much more, with beautiful things of his spirit. And I have found that so true. So true. Nothing, nothing appeals to me anymore except seeing lives changed, love and peace. Just, it's just a wonderful life. Is no other? There's no other way to go if you're a Christian. The fullness, the, you know, when Jesus came, he said, "The fullness of time is coming." He came. Okay, the fullness of time has come again, and it's his second coming. The world, there's a worldwide refining process going on right now. Make sure you're getting into it. This will, what I'm teaching, I'm trying to help you. It's without, it's, it's, it's without fear, but it's holiness and righteousness preparing for the second coming. It's going to be fresh breath being poured, breathed on us from heaven. The restoration of all things is going to take place. He's bringing us back to our first love and even more. Great desire for him. A great desire for him. He's going to do Acts 3, 20, 21 says, And that he may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you before whom heaven received until the time of restoration of all things, which God has spoken of, out of the mouth of the prophets since the world began. He's fixing to come. And he's restoring things, and we're going to be in this restoration. You'll never know his rest until you yield. You'll never know fully his rest. There's a rest for, for us. When troubles come, you seek him, you stay. He keeps you in that place. And he'll, he'll guide you through it. And I know there's a lot of pain on people have lost a lot of loved ones. I've lost a lot of loved ones. I never lost, I haven't lost my husband because every time the the enemy's trying to take him out of here. God, the Lord brings him back. And he's a, he's a miraculous miracle over and over and over. So, so I haven't lost my husband, but I have a lot of friends that have. And my husband's lost most of his friends. I think he has one or two left. You know, so we're at the age where our friends are leaving. But the, I, so I, don't, I, I don't know anything about losing your husband or your mate or child. Thank God that's just his blessing. People do know that, though. But the Lord wants to restore you and use you to bring healing to other people. Whatever you've been through is what he uses you for in the body of Christ to help other people be healed and go on with their life. Malachi 3.23 
but who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner of silver. He will purify and purge the sons of Levi. And we are all sons because we're, we're in, grafted in as gold and silver that they will offer unto God, the Lord, an offering of righteousness. There's a refining process going on. It's painful, but it's beautiful. It always brings beauty. It's the atmosphere of God's love that brings beauty. So don't ever give up and don't ever quit. Let him do the work in you. It's the day of the potter where, he's, where he, heat and pressure molds that clay. That's why I said, Lord, just show me. I don't want any more. Just show me, Lord. I'll yield. Just show me what I need. If you're having trouble right now, you need to look and see if he's not trying to give you to surrender and change something in it. Change something. Not all of that. The enemy attacks us. I, but I'm talking about the things that you know are the Lord. The refiner's fire is, is, is to bless you, not to destroy you, but to bless you. He says, I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. He's your Savior. And it's those trials that brings faith of gold that no one can take from you because you have been tried and it's worked in you and it's yours. If you're in a place where you can't see the finish line, there's a glorious coming forth of his glory on your life. If you think you're at a place that, that you can't see how it could ever happen, oh yes, you hang in there, don't you ever let go. You keep saying the word, go into him, get, out, get everything out of your mind and I always say, it's not your mind. Talk to him from your heart. Talk from here where you live, from the heart. Get along with God. He will bring you out to the secret place. I call it a secret place. Actually, you can go on, and I didn't know this, you can go on the web and look up Catherine Kuhlman. She talks about the secret place. This is what I'm telling you. It's back there in the Holy of Holies. It's where it's you and God. Nobody else is back there. Only one could go back there. It's you and God. It's you and your relationship with the Lord and, and the supernatural. It's the place of surrender at the cross. It's not to destroy you. It's to possess you. He wants to, he wants to be in you. Give up anything that, ask him to show you anything that might be standing in the way. I'm asking that tonight and please just show me and, let me, and give me the grace to surrender, Lord. It's not your strength. He wants the pride out of all of our lives. He wants us to know it's not our strength. It's not our ability. It's not any of that. It's surrender and yielding to him to do it. So he gets all the praise and glory. It's a surrender. It's intimate fellowship that comes with all of this. And I tell him, Lord, I'm willing to pay the price for you, to know you. I want to know your revelation. I want to know you. Uh, whatever is that we're capable of knowing here on earth, let me be the with that one of those that's experiencing that. You say the same thing. I mean, he wants you to pray what's in your heart. He wants to know you love him. In the secret places where you come under the authority of the word of God, that the authority of the Word of God you're under. It's a time of spiritual, special time alone with God that empowers us and brings us into brokenness. It, it does. It's that time. It's what well, I've been talking about brokenness. To find His perfect will, you will have to come to a place of brokenness. You tried this, you tried that, you did this, you covered it, you bandaged it, you did this, you did this, you blamed it. He wants you broken before Him. And in that brokenness comes life. It's gone, and he comes in. And it's a place of blessing. That very place that you gave, you couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. No matter what, you couldn't make it happen. You couldn't give it up. It was always there torment. You're always there whatever. You always yielded to it. When it brokenness, before him, under the authority of the word of God, it's in that inner court. It's in the in, in the middle of court where all of this is going on before you get to the Holy of Holies. 
It's in that second where there's no light in there except the Spirit of God, the bread, the showbread, the bread, which is Jesus Christ. It's where you're learning all about him, and it's there that you decide, I'm surrendering it all. And then that right there is when he's dealing with the soul. It's in, that, in the inner court, the second place. There's no natural light there. There's not human light. It's the spirit light where he's showing you there, there is the place that you have to surrender. You make the decision, I'm surrendering everything. Help me, Lord. And he takes it one at a time as you're able to deal with it. As the word comes, because it's the word that's illuminated in you in there, and you're eating the bread, which is Jesus. His lordship, he becomes lordship of that area of your life that you surrender. He wants you to be a light and a salt in this earth. And there's where you're transformed. It really is a place of transformation. You recognize who he is and what he's doing. And people will recognize you've been with Jesus. They said that about the disciples. They were said they were ignorant men. But the, the Sadducees, Pharisees, they literally said they recognized that these men had been with Jesus. It doesn't matter about your education. It doesn't matter about what you look like, what you have, who you are. You can be thrown out on the streets. It doesn't matter. If you are willing to, to surrender and, and, get, and stay in the Word and let the Word change you at the cross through the blood, in the name of Jesus, the work of the Holy Spirit, they will know you have been with Jesus. I've seen the most broken people in life go through what I'm telling you. You would never know where they've been and where Jesus brought them from. They were changed in new people, a new heart, a new life. It doesn't have anything to do with how much money you have. It has to do with you and Jesus. The, the, you can't be arrogant. It's a humble place, and you want to stay there because you want his anointing, you want his life on you. And Jesus was a humble man. He was, he, was, he was humble. He was a servant. That's where you have to stay. The more we have of him, the more we realize we're nothing without him. We are nothing without him. You get to a place where you realize you're so transformed into him. And I don't want to leave anything out because I want to make sure you get this because a lot of you are young. Some of you are middle aged. It's not too late. Wherever you are, it's not too late to just tell Jesus, get in the Word and let it change you. He's doing a quick work even now. I know that. He's doing a very quick work. He wants a new creation in you, not the old one, that you become a new creation. So help us, Holy Spirit. That's it. Lord Jesus, help us. Mary, hi, honey. Brian, Dawn, Pate, I'm, I see I see. you. I've missed a lot of you. Logan Bowman, honey. Hi, sweetie. That's my grandson, and he's helped me so much with this. He has helped me so much with so many things over here in our house. With, with my, I have this gift. Someone gave me the, this little thing that goes around the back end of my floor. I forget what you call it. And every time things happen, Logan has to come over here and set it up and fix it. And he, he's just so good about all that. He and Whitney, and then Rachel is so good. I'm not, I don't want to get into all this, but Rachel brings us meals a lot. I, they're all so different. All my grandchildren are different. They all bless us in so many different ways. But Logan's been really good to, to work and help me with. And with all of this, he even looked about getting me a microphone, and he hooked the light up here. Just so many things. Oh, Joe said that's a wonderful, powerful teaching. Yes, get in the Word. Oh, my, the Word is Jesus. Get Eat Him. Eat Him. It's in the Word. Lord, I give you this teaching. Holy Spirit, I give it to you. I pray that every person that's supposed to hear this hears this teaching, and they hear what the Spirit is saying to the body of Christ, that they hear what the Spirit is saying to them individually, that they realize that they are individual, that you died for them, that you created them for a purpose, and that you gave your life so that they could be come back and be joined back to you. I pray that for me and all of my family and my loved ones and everybody that's ever helped me in any way with this ministry. 
that God Almighty is drawing you and that we become the fire here on earth of his glory, the fire of his glory. And, um, and that the Lord is supernatural. The thing in the supernatural, it's not even, it, it, the gifts all operate, but that's not even what, to me, it's, it's the fellowship with him. It's that where his presence is here all. That's what that's what's worth it all. But out of that, whatever he wants to do, he can do. We want we want everything. Logan, I love you too, honey. You're so precious. Precious grandson. Precious, precious grandson. And Alina and Butch Jettis. Butch, I'm so glad you're with us. I pray you've been blessed. And that the Lord just just touches everybody. I've got new people on, and we will have a lot of new as the time goes on. And I'm thanking the Lord for that. And I ask the Lord right now that he does a work in all of our lives and not one of us miss what he has for us. Not one of us. That we take a hold of this. No matter if you're in prime of life and at the top of the echelon, echelon in whatever or whatever the Lord has you doing, that he comes first in your life. That he becomes first in your life. And he will make your life so much different. And you'll be so thankful you decided tonight that he was going to be first. Uh, Butch says, for it is God working in you to both desire and work out his great purpose. Yes, it is all the Lord. Draw you feel him drawing you, but you don't. You get busy and you don't take time to keep him first. He has to be first. He has to know that you want him first. So that's that for tonight. And Regina, thank you, honey. Um, you pray for the next week. The Lord shows me what to teach on because I, I have to go. I have to look and pray and pray. And when I feel this certain anointing, I know that somebody, it may just be for one person, but I know that's what I was supposed to share tonight. And, and so here we go. This is what he wanted tonight. And the love walk. What comes out of all that is this love. And it's, it's a supernatural love. It's not emotional. It, he anoints our emotions with his love. And sciatica nerves being healed. Well, so we're going to pray. And I thank God for the new people that, are, that have come on. And remember, these, these are on YouTube under Linda Blankenship. And last week's out there now. And I've had a lot of response on the, on the wall of Je Nehemiah, how the Lord's building our walls up. They've been torn down where the enemy has just destroyed some of us. And then um, the gates, those different gates. And we've all going through those gates. And the last gate before his return, the east gate, that last gate next to it is the horse gate and the warriors. And, of course, Jesus, I say this, he's the captain of the host of the warriors. And we're, I know he called me to be a warrior. I know I'm a warrior. That's the gift I do know the Lord has because I needed it so much myself. He gave me such a heart for people to be free, that soul, help them get their soul free so they can, so they can have more and more of him. And, and the peace that comes with it, and the love and all of that. So we're going to pray. We thank God for what he's done tonight. And I pray, I know I've seen a lot of like nerve pain, and I saw sciatica, and I've seen cancers everywhere. Um, I've seen, I don't even know what, all life-threatening. Oh, thank you for bringing fresh life healing word. Thank you, honey, for saying that. Patsy, honey, thank you. Rachel Captain, there's my granddaughter. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Lord. Rachel, Rachel came over to this evening and surprised us with this big dish like this, this big, with these chocolate-covered strawberries. The strawberries were this big. I've never seen anything like it. And she had coated them and coated them, coated them with this chocolate. And then on, they were all decorated differently over the chocolate with the white icing. You have never seen anything so beautiful. Rachel Catherine did that in her kitchen and bought us a, us today. And we it was so, oh my, I said, well, that's what we're having for dessert for supper. So her, grand, her pappy ate a big one, Rachel, and I ate one. And I thank you for doing that because she, what y'all don't understand, our car, our car, it was a, is a, is a 2010, and we bought it right at 2011 pilot honda pilot and we don't take it's over in charge you have to take it over charge to get it checked and all 
and we don't take it over there like we should. They we did up until about a year ago, and I, I Shelby can't drive anymore, and I have to drive, and I don't like to drive on those downtown. Char if you've ever been to Charleston, see we don't have any land down here to expand. We're right on the ocean, so these streets are now. And I don't like to drive way over on the other side of Charleston and take the car to the Honda place. And they don't have one here in Mount Pleasant or where we live. So the, we were driving around Friday and the light started flashing. And it, I saw the first time it flashed. And before I could even tell Shelby, it started kind of jerking and like it was going to cut off. And I could feel it pulling, like pulling, trying to go. And it scared me. And, and we were back here on... Long Point Road, where the port is, one of the one of the large ports in America on the coast, where these huge, beautiful trucks. We pray for them. We thank God for all the business coming in. I mean, it is so one after another going in. That's where I was in the middle of all those trucks when this happened. I thought I can't stop here. They'll run. You know, I'll get run over it, because it's just two lanes going down there, and there this unbelievable. Uh, the traffic it's it's like it's 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 really big here it's huge and we thank god that people are buying and the, you know they've got a lot of business we thank for every driver shelby and i pray for them so i'm thinking lord get me to where we're going and we were going to habitat for humanity because we go at a certain time there's nobody hardly in there and we wear a mask and we you know we take care of ourselves and we get, so we got in the parking lot, and Shelby said, don't cut the car off. And I said, well, I am not driving this car home. I am not driving this car home. And so he pulls the book out, and I said, I don't know what to look under. What does that thing mean? It's, you know, it was, it was blinking, but we didn't know what it meant. So I had to go through this big book. I couldn't find that thing was blinking. When I went back to the front and went through the first three or four or five pages, there it was. And it meant stuff under the hood was all messed up. So he said, "We it's okay. We can drive it home. And, and we had to stop at every red light. And it was going, boo, 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 you know, like it's going to cut off. And I prayed, God, get us home. Well, we got home. And we called the Honda place. And we called Turkey, which is a, a huge um, play, uh, business here that comes and picks cars up from Rex and all. And they went to the house within two hours and took it over there. And so we won't get it back till Wednesday. And so when Rachel came with these strawberries, we have been in this house. We can't go anywhere. We don't have a car. So we're here. And that, so that was real, just really amazing that she came with those strawberries. It was like, thank goodness. That's something so wonderful. And we got to, stitch, you know, be with her for a while. Now, that was a long story. But the car's okay, and they're fixing it. And they said when we get it back, it'd be like new. Because we've just driven around here, you know, right here and around here. So thank God. And he got us home. And it's being fixed. So that's all. That's the end of that story. Dave says, I want your will in my life. You are my treasure. You know what I need. Uh, yes, that's a that's a wonderful prayer. Dawn, I surrender. And uh, Elena, we keep ourselves in your love. It's getting a little better, but lingering. Okay. Please continue to pray for dizziness for me and my daughter. I have it too, I understand. We're, co we're commanding all dizziness and vertigo and... Um, for, uh, for one of the ladies, she was damaged with shingles and it's caused damage to her vesticular, which is causing it. So we command the vesticular to be healed and the shingle damage to go tonight in Jesus' name and be healed in Jesus' name. So we're going to start praying and ask the Lord what he wants to do. And um, I saw a lot of people with COVID and with cancer. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we're all agreeing. Anybody with COVID, we command their lungs to open up. We command there be no blood clots, and also one in out of every ten months later still having um, problems from this thing. Some of them are serious. One out of every ten people that's had this COVID is having side effects. Three months, and I believe that one of the places said even six months later, still having side effects. We command all side effects to go. We command this plague to come out of America, to come out of bodies that need healing tonight and there'll be no deaths we thank you god there'll be no more deaths of anybody we know in jesus name and we thank you for life we bind the death spirit off the plague off and we apply the blood we 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 anoint them 
saturate them in the blood of Jesus that keeps the death angel away. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name, I'm going to, um, and also cancer, we bind that, 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 even Benny Hinn calls it a demon now, and it is. We bind every demon of cancer. I think they find weak places, places so you'll never identify them. There's something wrong with you. But we bind every demon from hell off of all of us. To do with cancer, tumors, growths, lesions, nodules, anything. We command them all to go and be gone permanently in Jesus' name and never come back in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, I'm asking you to show me what you want to do tonight. I've read... I read the first group that you gave me before the meeting. Now, now show, just I'm, I'm right here. We're right here, Lord Jesus. We're your children, and we love you. And I thank you for healing um, Dorothy. And I thank you for healing the lady that's pregnant, the third tri uh, trimester, and she just diagnosed with COVID, that the, that baby's going to be okay. And uh, the pastor that can't sleep, that he's going to start sleeping, and the, um, there was one other one, I, well, I've already called him out, that the Lord, the Lord's healing this, healing this baby, healing this child, she's going to have a full head of hair, I say within one year, and I want everybody to agree, because she's just got a plucky and a pluck, the, we ask God to give her a full head of hair, beautiful hair, and curly if her mother wants it curly, in Jesus' name. So, Lord Jesus, I give you this teaching. I give it back to you for the Holy Spirit to do a mighty work that you that you, you draw hearts, you draw souls. You draw us into the work of the kingdom. You draw us into the Spirit of God. You draw us into uh, the Word and that the Word reflects who you are and who we should be. God, I'm thanking you for a mighty work of your spirit, that this lives change it tonight forever, and that they realize it's that flesh, it's the veil of the flesh that that, that need is that you are tearing open so you can get get all that stuff out of our soul so we're free to just move freely in the spirit, that nothing is held back because of pain in us any longer in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, I thank you for healing and delivering people tonight. I thank you for miracles. I thank you for manifested miracles, miraculous miracles, healings, deliverances, breakthroughs, marriages healed, children that are strayed are going to be filled with the Holy Spirit and come back to you, Lord, and long and hunger for righteousness, hungering to know you. Lord, I think you are doing a work in all of our loved ones, that not one will be lost, that every one of them are born again, and when you come, because you could come any minute, there's very little left to be done according to the scripture. So we thank you, God, that not one of our loved ones will be left here. And we thank you for using us to bring revival to America, that millions of souls. And this, this, the, these videos are bringing people in, around the world into the kingdom. Thank you, God, for that. And healing them. And setting them free and delivering them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And uh, in India, where there's 50 different uh, groups that uh, a pastor takes this and sends to 50 different groups in India, God, I thank you that when they hear this, they're being healed, delivered right on the spot. And Jesus, miraculous healings in the other countries too, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you that, Lord, that you're catching people so they don't fall away, that they come back to you with their whole heart in Jesus' name. No falling away, that you've got them, you, you've you got your eye on them and you're pulling them back in in Jesus' name. That you're rescuing the parish and you, that you are rescuing them, Lord, for your glory and use us. Okay, someone um, someone had open heart surgery, and there's a problem because I can see the sutures down all the way down your chest. They had yeah, they went in that way. God is healing whatever. I don't know if it's an infection or if it, what they did didn't turn out right. God is doing a miraculous healing inside of you. He's doing it in Jesus' name. You're very concerned, but the Lord said to tell you He's healing you. Just start thanking him and praising him. He is healing you tonight. 
somebody farsighted is being too farsighted. It's really like really bad. The Lord's fixing that, healing that tonight in Jesus' name. And tomorrow you'll notice a change. And it's going to be a gradual, a gradual healing. Some type of transplant. I don't know if that goes back to the heart or lungs or what, but whatever it is, the transplant's being is is the body's taking it and it's it's okay. You it's gonna be part of you and it's gonna stay healthy in Jesus' name. Nerves, a lot of people's ner nerve, nervous conditions are being healed. All types of nervous conditions. We speak to the endocrine glands. That Yes, Lord. That the endocrine glands are healed so they're not producing too much of anything and not, a, not enough of other things. That everything's in harmony and balance for their bodies and their, their lives. All of us, in Jesus' name. And this is, this is big. And it's more, it's more than one person. It's like you're... Um, Adrenaline, you're producing too much adrenaline, and the Lord is slowing it down, and it's caused you to be very hyper and nervous, and I don't know what all. And God, I speak to that gland, and I command that that it be normal right now, be normal right now, in Jesus' name, and that you you just correct everything that's gone wrong there, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Fallopian tubes. Wow. Lord, thank you. You're healing someone's fallopian tubes so they can get pregnant. We thank you, Lord, that those tubes are totally healed and that they that there not be one bearing one among them in Jesus' name. That's a promise. So I thank you, God. They're getting pregnant and they're having babies. They're having, having them babies they want. Fallopian tubes are being healed tonight. Praise you, Jesus. Cross eyes being his eyes crossed. The Lord's straightening it up now. And I'm looking at someone's nose and the sinuses up in here. The Lord's, I know we had that one lady, all the nodules disappeared. I don't know, this is somebody, this is not her. This is something, I don't know who it is. But the Lord's healing whatever's going on with your sinuses. They're totally healed. There'll not be any problems. No problems in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Sinus headaches are disappearing. We, uh, yes, Lord. Sinus headaches. We, we command allergies. We're speaking to allergies that it just dies. And that there's no allergies in Jesus' name. Let's see, what is that? Spine, someone's spine. What, you know, last week I think I got a lumbar area, but we've had several miraculous healings of total spines and hips, miraculous kinds of things. So, so but I just heard spine again, but not, it must be the whole spine because he's not saying. So we thank you, Lord, that you're healing spines tonight. Totally replay, total realignment from the neck all the way to the end of the spine bone. The, that the discs, the vertebrae, the ligaments, the tendons, the blood vessels, the nerve, everything is in perfect alignment. The necks, heal necks so there's no problem with necks. That they'll never have to have surgery on their neck or their spine or me or anybody we know in Jesus' name. That we are healed by your stripes in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the miraculous with the neck and the spine. And also the legs are involved. Uh, to, like like uh, tingling in Jesus' name. Um, a, a uterus is being healed. Someone's uterus is being healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for that. And Lord, for the people that can't sleep, that are having troubles, I ask you to get, there's a scripture that it is written, you give a sweet sleep, your beloved, sweet sleep. So we bind that on them and we ask you to put them in a Holy Spirit like a tranquilized sleep state. So they sleep all night and wake up refreshed in the morning in Jesus' name. Every from now on in Jesus' name. Uh, someone has like a tick where their eye keeps twitching and it's bothering you. It's been, it's been bad. It's more than just every now and then. This is serious. 
because if we command the nerves to be healed and that thing to go that's causing your eye to jerk like that, we break the powers of it and command total healing right now in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' holy name. Ears are being healed. People's ears are being healed. Oh, the Lord just showed me some carotid arteries, and, and I don't know if it's one or more next that have some buildup, plaque buildup, and the Lord's healing them. He's cleaning them out in Jesus' name. Don't rub them. You don't want to rub, ever rub your carotid, anything, where it goes right into your brain. But the Lord's healing some people's carotids tonight. Thank you, Lord. That's a big. Okay, is that it, Lord? I'm not. A sprained ankle's being healed. A sprained an ankle's being healed. Thank you, Lord. Lungs are being healed. I see lungs. I see the picture of lungs. So you, if you have lung, anything you need, lay your hands on it. Claim it for yourself or anybody you know that the lungs are being healed. I'm going to lay my hand up on, on my part. I'm asking Lord to let it touch you that the anointing of God Almighty goes right through here and hits you, heals you, delivers you, gives you new insight. Um, just that the Spirit of God brings life to you where there's been places that has been no life. And all of you that um, that have been crying out to the Lord for your children, don't give up. The Lord just said that. Tell them, don't give up. You keep You keep crying out for your children. Do what you have to do. And a lot of them are gone, so you don't, you know, you have no control over anything. But the Lord will give you wisdom of what you need to do for any child. And those that are having children, ch uh, like children that are rebellious, defiant, uh, are out of your control and you can't control them, you just surrender them to the Lord and, and you do whatever whatever you that you can do. Um to protect, protect if they're if you're afraid, if they've gotten whatever, you protect yourself. You protect yourself and submit and sur surrender them to the Lord and ask the Lord to get them where they can get help in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And anything, if you can think of something, you know, to get somebody involved, do that and just all don't ever quit praying for them in Jesus' name. Because I know some of you are in a real hard place with your children. And uh, drugs and things can cause kids to do crazy things. The Lord does not want you in a place where you're fearful, where you're being abused from your own children. So uh, talk to your um, crisis center. Talk to uh, the lead, you know, any, anywhere and get advice. And you do what you have to do to protect, first to protect yourself. And try to get, and, may, and pray that, they, that the Lord brings them and heals them. Don't ever give up on you. Don't ever give up on your children. And don't ever say they've got to go to the bottom to ever come back because then you have just released them to the pits of hell. Most of them don't come back. And if you have said that, you need to repent and ask God to bring them back and to start praying deliverance over them and saturating them in the blood and, and praying scripture over them and say, no, Lord, they're not going to the bottom. I believe your word that you are delivering my children, and, and especially if they've gone into heavy witchcraft. I mean, that's a scary thing, but your prayers are more powerful than witchcraft that's deceived them and there's a lot of that going on that's causing a lot of havoc in homes too it's bad stuff and the lord it is um it's not anything he wants his people to have anything to do with but uh, you know just you use ask for wisdom and and get help like where there's people that can help you or give you advice so that you have good advice and wisdom and then don't ever quit praying for your children because I've watched the Lord change so many lives because the parents did not give up on the word, the promises of the Lord. I love you. I pray you have a wonderful week. It's 1035. Well, we're, you know, we're about 30 minutes earlier. I've, I've wondered if we ought to start at 8 o'clock. I don't know yet. I'm just praying about that. Joe, I love you. Starla, I love you. Rebecca, I love you. Allison, Dawn. Uh, I, there, um, there's a lot that, you know, not, I can't, um, let me see if I can go this way. Regina, uh, Mary, Jill, Chester, hi, honey, 
The Lord just bless you. Bless all of you. Dave, Dawn, Cindy, um, Joyce. I'm trying to, there's, there were some new young men on here. Um, I, did, I don't get them. Rachel and Logan and Dave Shannon and Will and Cindy and Wilson and Christina and Logan and Patsy and Ashley and Rebecca. There's two or three. And, and Juanita Burnett. Thank you, honey. I pray God really blesses you. This teaching will be on, on YouTube within a within the week he got it on this week before wednesday mary joe deborah butch um allison allison well i i can't go on i lori lori honey thanks i'm so glad you're on here um actually right tonight i've had more than i've ever had on mine jackie thank you for being with us honey butch Jetta, mary brian ranger I'm so happy. I'm seeing, you know, I'm, it's just wonderful. What I wanted to tell you when Facebook, I haven't, I haven't had the man that has um, my granddaughter, Whitney, and the man that does all my YouTube and my uh, web page and all can go in and look at things. So several weeks ago, he went in and looked and he sent it to me about uh, where we go into the different nations. And Madagascar has more watching than any other country. And someone said it's an island or something runs around the African coast. And this is every time he's looked at it, it's like 10 point something more men are watching it, this that I'm doing than women. And the age group is 27 to 44 men. Now, is that not amazing? I don't know what it is now because they've, there's, everything's gotten screwed up with the count. Oh, the Lord told me not to look at it. Because it, I don't want to be discouraged, because I because I know the light things are wrong. Every week it goes down, down when it should be way. It should be almost four thousand now. I've been watching it for weeks, and I haven't said anything. But today I thought I need everybody praying. Hi, Rachel, honey. Thank you for that sweetheart. All the people put hearts and love and all. So just pray that God gets it corrected, because we were trying. You know, so many likes is how. They go by likes and how they treat you, the things that you can get better things on Facebook, better coverage and all. And what? And instead of giving me, because this past week there were 12 new likes. It's like that every week, 8, 12, 15 or something. And every week they come down, 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 till they're down to 2,000 and something. But then on the ones following me, it's going up. Not much, but at least it's going up, not going down. And I know I know I've got more new people following me every week. I know because I hear from them. Y'all can, you can text me uh, or you can email me at uh, mtmlinda, no, mtmlinda at aol.com. It's L-I-N-D-A. You, you can email me that. You can message me if you need, you know, if you need to message me and need to send a, I'll, if you have a miracle, a healing, deliverance, anything, because I tell you, the Lord healed me of something two weeks ago and I've been waiting to make sure it's healed. This thumb on my left hand was like caught, caught in the joint and like, and it was so painful because you have to have your thumb to use your, you know, your fingers. It was so painful. And, and one day I realized the pain was gone. It was after one of our meetings. The next morning I realized my thumb was okay and it's still healed and it's going to stay healed in Jesus name. It is still it had been like that for several weeks. I don't know what happened to it. It's like got stuck or something, but the Lord healed it. So I'm so thankful for that. So let me hear your what's going on with you so we can share it because it's to bring glory to Jesus. That's what it says. We're to bring glory here on earth that he's alive. I love you. Have a blessed week. And just you can get a hold of me if you really need me. I, I just pray God's richest blessings on you and on your homes. I ask all of our homes to be filled with holy warring angels, delivering angels, worshiping angels. I ask the Lord to open your eyes to see the holy angels that, and uh, give you dreams, interpretation of dreams, to open revelation, new revelation knowledge to you. 
that but the, most of all that the presence of Jesus Christ the Holy Spirit that you welcome him every morning before you get out of the bed you say Holy Spirit I'm surrendering to Jesus today. I feel me, stay with me, talk to me, guide me. He is a person. Don't forget the Holy Spirit is a person. Like Jesus was. A, he is a person. And he's here and he's real. Invite him to walk with you, be with you, so, to, to saturate you. And just do that. And um, always go praise back to Jesus. He comes to glorify Jesus. So whatever he does for you, it's to glorify. That's why I say share what he does for you. That glorifies Jesus. The Holy Spirit's here to glorify Jesus. And so when He his power heals you, his power delivers you, his power gives you. Glorify Jesus. And you do it by sharing it. You overcome Satan with the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. And it brings glory to Jesus. So good night. Good night and all, all around the world that the Lord God Almighty will just wrap you in his love, wrap you in his divine presence, wrap you in um, his tenderness, his grace, his joy, his everything, that you're wrapped in Jesus inside and out, and that the Holy Spirit just, I just ask the Lord to touch you on your head right now, all of you, anybody watching this in the weeks to come, that the anointing of the Spirit of God goes from the top of your head to the soles of your feet now and fills you and floods you with his presence in Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' holy name. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be delivered in the name of Jesus. I break every devil from hell that's holding you captive, tormenting you, belittling you. I command you to sleep like a baby tonight, and I break the neck of Satan in every plan and assignment against your life. I bind back to the pits permanently and close every door, and ask the Holy Spirit to fill those areas, cleanse with the blood, and fill with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. In Jesus' holy name, in Jesus' holy name, amen. I love you. Good night. I'm going to... I don't want to tell you good night, but I've got to. And I love you. Thank you, Jesus.